free will, because of his love for his people, he determined of his own free will to come to this sin-sick world, this world full of hatred of him, this world full of men, women and children with deceitful, wicked hearts. The, the heart of man, the Bible says, the heart of mankind is the wicked, deceitful and desperately sick. We're not good people, my friends, and until we see ourselves as God says we are, we can't be saved. We'll be lost forever. You see, because Jesus Christ, he came into this world not for good people. He didn't come for good people because there aren't any. He came to save sinners. And he died on that cross. He lived a sinless life, a life that you and I can't live. We're, we're criminals, we're guilty criminals, we've messed up. We've messed up big time enough already for God to give us what we deserve, and that isn't heaven when we die. You know, you go to uh, <coughs> you go to many funerals these days, and and they'll they'll reassure the family. They'll say, well, you know, they'll tap the coffin and they'll say, well, if, you know, he or she, they're in heaven now, even though they've lived a godless life, even though they've lived a life not following Jesus. You know, they've lived a life. A life of pleasure, a life in pursuit of sin. But Jesus said, unless you take up your cross and follow me, you can't be my disciple. Christians are the only people going to heaven. Heaven is only for Christians. It's only for people who God has made Christians. I can't make you a Christian. I wish I could. Everybody out here today working would be on their way to heaven. I wish it was that easy. I wish I had that kind of power. But you need God's almighty power to change your heart because the last thing that you're going to do because your heart is at enmity to your creator, the last thing that you're going to do in life is become a Christian in your own strength. You love your sin, you're a sin-loving creature, you're a sinner by nature. And you need God to change your nature, my friends. You need God to take away your cold, stony heart. Your heart that loves sin and hates God. You need Him to take away your cold, stony heart and give you a heart of flesh. You must be born again, you see. Jesus Christ said you must be born again. And that isn't baptism. That isn't just turning over a new leaf and becoming a better person. You must be born again. You need a heart change. You need God to make you a Christian because Christians are the only people going to heaven. And let me tell you this, my friends. There's nobody in heaven at this moment in time. There's nobody in heaven at this moment in time. And heaven is filled with an innumerable multitude of people who've died and gone before us. Heaven is filled with an innumerable mul multitude of people whom God has saved. And not one of them, not one of them, not one of those individuals in heaven now are there because of anything they've done. You see, it's not by works of righteousness which we have done. The good news is today that you don't have to do anything to get to heaven. Or maybe better put, you can't do anything to get to heaven. It's already done. God killed his son. Jesus Christ willingly laid down his life on that cross to save people from the wrath of an angry God. The wrath that is currently upon you if you're not a Christian. Flee the wrath to come, Workington. Come to the cross of Jesus Christ by faith. Look. To that cross and see Jesus Christ bleeding in agony and dying on that cross. The one who didn't deserve to die, the one who was sinless, the sinless God became a, a sinless human being, you see. And he came to save sinners. And in order for us to be saved, we need to see ourselves as wicked sinners in the sight of a holy God, a God who knows everything about us. His eyes are in every place, you see, the God of the Bible. His eyes are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. There's nothing hidden from the eyes of Him with whom we have to give an account. And 
So while we're sinners and enemies of God, Christ died for the ungodly. There's no where else you can find this kind of good news. No other religion can give you a shred of hope in eternity. You see, because without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. Without the shedding of blood, you have no hope. And Jesus Christ shed his precious blood on that cross to give you hope today. You can have hope. Not in, in this world. This world is fading away. This world is, is coming to a, a bad end. If you hadn't already guessed. It's already written that God is going to destroy the world next time. Not by a flood but by fire. He's, going to, he's coming back. The God of the Bible. The creator of everything. The one who knit you together in your mother's womb. And knows your thought life. The God of the Bible. The only God who exists. Is coming back to judge Jesus Christ is your judge. Jesus Christ is your creator and your judge. And he's coming back. That same Jesus Christ who died on that cross. Who willingly <laughs> willingly laid down his life in the place of others. He bled and died in agony on that cross to give you hope. And he said it's finished. He was buried three days later. He defeated death. Just like he said he would. He said, nobody takes my life, Jesus Christ said. I lay down freely and I have power to take it up again. And that's what he did. He defeated death. The grave couldn't keep Jesus Christ. Death couldn't hold him. And he was seen by over 500 people. Over 500 eyewitnesses at one time saw him resurrected from the dead. No other religious leaders ever defeated death, have they? So there is one God, Workington. There's one God and one mediator. You and I need a mediator. We need somebody to go to God for us on our behalf. We need somebody to stand in the place to mediate between us and God. And it's Jesus Christ. The man, Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ, fully God, fully man. He's your only hope. He's all you need. Well, it's not only all you need, it's all you have, my friends. Uh, Roman Catholics. Are you a Roman Catholic? That's not going to help you, my friend. You need to be a Christian. You say, well, uh, I'll start going to church and I'll turn over a new leaf. I'll, I'll become a better person. You've already messed up. You've already messed up, my friends. It's not about you turning over a new leaf. I'm not here to try and make you a moral, better person morally. You might be able to improve your moral standing. But you've sinned against God. You've broken God's law a myriad of ways enough already, my friends. And the only thing that can cleanse you from that sin and the guilt and power of it is the blood of Jesus Christ. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness, you see. So you can start going to a mosque. You can start going to a mosque and praying five times a day, fasting, visit Mecca, say the Shihada. You young women could dress up and where you can only see the slits of your eyes. You could do that. But that's not going to help you in eternity, my friend. You could be the most religious Muslim, Hindu, Roman Catholic. You could become a Pope or a, a Roman Catholic uh, nun. It's not going to help you in eternity. There's nobody goes to heaven for anything that they've done. And all, all other religions other than Christianity is mankind's effort. Mankind's attempt to, to gain entrance into heaven. And it's not going to happen, my friends. Because it's, we're, we're saved by faith. By faith in what Jesus Christ has done on that cross. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead, you'll be saved. You can be saved from the wrath to come. And you can live your life knowing that you're saved. You see, Christianity is the only religion that can give anyone certainty of where they go when they die. Do you have certainty? 
of where you're going when you die? Do you know where your soul is going to spend forever? Because it is going to spend forever somewhere. God has already determined. He didn't ask our permission. He's made us eternal beings. So where are you going to spend forever? What are you going to do with your sin on the day of judgment? God is holy. He's pure. What is a holy, pure God going to do with unholy people? impure people like us what should he do you see there's a heaven to be won and a hell to be shunned my friends and you can't escape the fiery pit of hell you can't escape there by becoming religious by fasting and praying you can pray to your God 55 times a day and your sin remains how shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation. There's no name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved other than, Je than Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is our only hope, my friends. He's the way, the truth, the life. And nobody goes to heaven but by Him. Nobody. It doesn't matter how nice you think you are. It doesn't matter how pleasant and affable you are. It doesn't matter how many good deeds you do. We're sin. We're sinners in the sight of a holy God. And sinners get what they deserve if they die in their sin. They get what they deserve and that isn't heaven. See, a lot of nice people are going to end up in hell because they've rejected the truth. The truth that there's one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. He's our only hope, you see. And he died on that cross, Jesus Christ. He died... For all those who are living for themselves. Are you living for yourself still? Are you living this world, uh, this life in this world, as though you're the very center of the universe? Are you still living your existence? It's all about you and your happiness and your peace and your joy. Are you still living as though this world revolves around you and your happiness? Well, that can't be, can it? What about someone else's happiness and peace? What about someone else who thinks the same? Who's right? Yeah, you know you're not right. But Jesus can give you something better than living for self. He died on that cross. For all those who are living selfish existence. Thinking that this world exists for them and their happiness. Thinking that they're the very center of the universe. Don't do that to yourself because that, that's the way, that, that's the broad way that leads to destruction. Many find it. Don't do that to yourself, my friends. Don't die and go to a devil's hell. There's hope today. If you're breathing, there's hope for you. Jesus Christ, he died on that cross to save a people for himself. He died on that cross for his people's sins. Maybe there are some of his people here today. Maybe there are some people here today in Workington who Jesus Christ shed his precious blood for on that cross. And so that they could spend eternity with him. You see, God loves his people. God demonstrated his love toward us. That while we are sinners and enemies of, Christ, of God, Christ died for us. Christ died for us. He's your only hope. There's no hope anywhere else. And when he was seen by over 500 people, after he was resurrected from the dead, imagine that, a dead man walking. Imagine that, a dead man resurrected back to life from the dead. He was in the grave, he was buried three days later, he defeated death, and he, he showed himself to 500 people at one time. And then he ascended into heaven. He went up, he was taken up into the clouds from heaven, ascended up into heaven out of their sight. He's seated at the right hand of God, seated at the right hand of power, and he's going to return one day. Jesus Christ is coming back, and he's coming back soon, my friends. And you don't want to be on the wrong side of Jesus Christ. He's the judge. Yeah, all you 
have is a false peace, my friend. There is no peace if you're not right with the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ. All you have is a false peace, a false temporary peace. But you can be brought near. You can be reconciled to your Creator, you see. <laughs> see, when Jesus Christ comes back, He's going to return at the shout of an archangel, the Bible says. The shout of an archangel is going to return in flaming fire on the clouds from heaven and he's going to take vengeance. Jesus Christ is a vengeful God. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord, I will repay. And he's going to, he's going to take vengeance on all those who don't know God and those who aren't obeying the gospel. So your priority today, working the is believing the gospel, believing the Bible, aligning your thoughts up with the word of God and living the rest of your days, the rest of your life. It might not be long. You know, a lot, I don't know if you've heard or not, but a lot of people, a lot of people are dying suddenly these days, just curling up their toes and popping their clogs instantly. There's a lot of sudden death. It's a worldwide phenomenon. I don't know what could have caused it. People worldwide are just dying suddenly. And no one knows why. And that might be you. God might take your life suddenly. He might take your life this very night. When you stand before him and give an account of every thought, word, and everything you've done. It's terrifying. The Bible says it's a, a fearful thing. A fearful thing to stand before the one true living God. You're not going to stand before Allah. You might be able to bribe with, with some of your fasting and prayers. You're not going to stand before Mary or the Roman Catholic God who might throw you into purgatory. Purgatory doesn't exist. There's no second chance. When you die, you see, when you die, and it's when, not if. We're all going to die. Sorry to burst your bubble. You're not going to stay here forever. When you die, when your foot slides into eternity and God takes your life, it's too late to change your mind, Workington. It's too late to change your religion then. It's too late to repent of your sin then and get right with God. The Bible tells us that today, now, is the acceptable time. You've got today, and today only, because you're not guaranteed tomorrow. You're not guaranteed another lungful of air. And when God stops lending you breath and calls you to himself, it's game over. Game over, my friends. You'll stand before a just, holy judge. You will do what's right. He'll judge all sin wherever he finds it. He's going to leave no stone unturned. So don't gamble with your eternity. Get right with God today, my friends. Cry out to God. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. That's all we are. That's all we'll ever be. That's all we are, and even on our best day. Sinners in need of forgiveness. And your forgiveness can be found at the cross of Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him will not perish. Some people, many people are going to perish. Don't let it be you, my friends. But we'll have everlasting life. There's everlasting life on offer. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that through him, through Jesus Christ, the world might be saved. Whoever, whoever believes is not condemned, but whoever doesn't believe is condemned already. Because he's not believed in the name of the Son of God. This is the condemnation. The light has come into this world. Jesus Christ has come into this world with men, women, and children love darkness rather than light. Why? Because their deeds are evil. We're sin-loving creatures. We need God to change our nature. We need God to give us a new nature, a new heart with new desires. Christianity is the only religion that can change the human nature. You can become religious. You can wear religious garments. It doesn't make you any better on the day of judgment than, than, the, than Hitler. It really doesn't, my friends. See, God's ways are higher than our ways. And he's not filled by our professed religion. 
you know, and Adam and Eve sinned, they, 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 they knew they were naked and sowed fig leaves and put fig leaves over their nakedness. And that's all religion is. But God sees your heart. He knows what you are in secret, you see. What you are before people is what people think you are. And what you are in secret is what God knows you are. The God of the Bible is not fooled. He's not fooled by mankind's profession of good works. He's not fooled by or bribed by mankind's good works. There's nothing you can do to gain entrance into heaven. Nothing. Nobody goes to heaven for anything that they've done. Nobody. It's already done. The only work that God will accept as payment for mankind's sin is what Jesus Christ did on that cross. So look to him. Believe by faith that he died on that cross for you, my friends, and you can have eternal life, a free gift. You can have hope. You can live the rest of your days, however long that is. It might not be long. Life's a vapor, isn't it? Time flies. Nobody out here today is getting any younger. We're all moving forward to our appointment with God that's already fixed. Your appointment with God is fixed and nothing can change it, my friend. You can't add a single second to your life. And neither can you lose a single second of your life. Nobody dies before their time. Nobody. We're all going to die at our, our appointed time, at our day that's fixed already by a God who is doing all that he pleases. The God of the Bible is in the heavens doing all that he pleases. And he's fixed your day of death. When, you, when he calls you to himself, you leave it that exact moment that he's already chosen for you. See, there's no accidents in creation, my friends. Nothing happens in the creation apart from the will of God. He works out everything according to his good pleasure. So this world, it might look like it's chaotic. This world might look like it's falling apart to us. It's actually fallen into place. Everything's working out perfectly according to God's plan and pleasure. We we'll say, well, well, why do bad things happen then? You see, God even has a purpose for the evil perpetrated in life. All the wicked things that men, women and, and children get up to, God even has a purpose for that. And the question isn't, well, why? Why do bad things happen? The question should be, why does anything good happen? The, the whole earth is full of God's enemies. The whole earth is full of people shaking their fist and rebelling against their creator who lends them breath every single day of their lives. So the question isn't, why does anything bad happen? The question should be, why does anything good happen? We've got a world full of God's enemies. 1.6 billion Muslims worship, worshipping the false god Allah. 1.2 billion Roman Catholics worshipping the false god of Roman Catholicism. One point, well, there's Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, Hindus, all the false religions of the world. People will believe anything when they reject the Bible. The Bible's true, my friend. The Bible is from your Creator. Pick up your Bible, put down Candy Crush, and read the Word of God and stop wasting your life. Come to a knowledge of the truth, my friends. There's no greater joy when you come to a knowledge of the truth. There's no greater joy for any human being when they come to understand the world that they live in. You don't have to be led astray by false religion any longer. You can have a, a real joy, a real hope that's last, that lasts for eternity. If you're, you see, heaven is for people who love God. Only people who love the God of the Bible go to heaven. And if you have a modicum of love in your heart for the God who provides for your every need, then heaven's for you. If you have a modicum of love in your heart that you didn't put there for the God of the Bible, then you're going to heaven. But if you have no love in your heart 
No sincere, genuine love in your heart for the God who provides for your every need. Then heaven isn't for you, my friend. You're not going to heaven at this moment in time. Yeah, you know God exists, my friend. You know God exists. The Bible says, the fool says in his heart, there's no God. Yeah, the Bible's from God, my friend. The Bible's from your Creator. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God or reading the Word of God. Entrance of God's Word brings light. See, there's no contradiction in God's word. There's no error in God's word. The Bible's full of prophecy, accurate, detailed prophecy. That most of it's been fulfilled so far. The next time the Bible predicts something and it doesn't happen, it'll be the first time. The Bible's from your Creator. And no prophecy ever came by the act of human will. It wasn't put together by humankind. Men didn't conspire in secret to give us the Bible to spoil the LGBT XYZ agenda. That's not what happened, my friends. The Bible wasn't put together to spoil humanity's fun. No prophecy ever came by the act of human will, but holy men of God spoke as they were carried along by God's Holy Spirit. The Bible's from your Creator. Jesus Christ said that Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. You do a good job. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. The Bible's food for your soul, my friends. It can help you spiritually. You not only need physical help, you need spiritual help. Your greatest need is spiritual. Because you can have everything physical, can't you? You can have food and shelter, you can have a nice home, your family doing well at university, and you can have wonderful relationships, you can have all that, but die and go to hell. Jesus Christ said, what will it benefit anybody who gains the whole world and loses his soul in hell? Your greatest need is spiritual, my friends. You need your sins forgiven, and your sins can only be forgiven at the cross of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is your only hope. is the only saviour on offer. God killed his son. There can't be any other way to peace with God. There can't be any other way to heaven other than Jesus Christ. He did it all on that cross. He died for sinners like you and me. So come to him today. Today if you hear God's voice. Don't harden your hearts. Your hearts have been hardened enough. God will make you a new creature. If anyone is in Christ, if anyone's a Christian, they're a new creature. Behold, all things have become new. The old has gone. When someone becomes a Christian, people hear about it. People know about it. There's a change in that individual's life. Has there been a change in your life? Has God saved you? Are you born again? Jesus Christ said, unless a man or woman is born again, they don't enter heaven. That same Jesus Christ, born of a virgin, a miracle birth, angels announced his appearing. Wonderful signs and wonders pointing to the birth of Jesus Christ. He was born by a miracle, a virgin birth, and he lived a sinless life. He healed the sick. He opened blind eyes, deaf ears. He raised the dead to life. He cured leprosy. And he even forgave sin. And Jesus can forgive your sin. All of it. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. All of it can be forgiven, my friends. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter how far your wicked, sneaky, depraved, little heart has took you into the depths of sin, it can all be forgiven. And all that burden and shame of, and guilt of all the wicked things you have done in life, that burden that's intolerable, the, the shameful, sneaky, nasty things you've done in life, it can all be forgiven. That burden can be taken off your back and placed upon the cross of Jesus Christ. 
Where sin abounds, grace abounds much more, you see. God's a God of grace, undeserved kindness. The soul that sin shall die, but the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. So you, if you care about your own soul and you want to, you want to go to heaven when you die, then you need to come to the cross. You need to look to the cross where Jesus Christ bled and died on that cross and say, well, he died for me. For all the wicked, nasty, sneaky things I've done in life that I wish I'd never done. He did it for me. He died. He bled in agony and died for me. And that's, a, that's what a Christian is. So a Christian isn't somebody pretending to be a good person. A Christian is somebody who's come to the realization that they're a sinner without hope.